Dr. Uh, Johannes von Lintig is next. He's going to talk about molecular components affecting ocular vitamin A homeostasis. I'm Johannes von Linding, I'm from the Department of Pharmacology, and I will talk a little bit about vitamin A metabolism. And <clears throat> I think nothing demonstrates better the complex interaction of our body with the environment like the visual system. The eyes acquire more than 80% of our sensory input for the brain, and additionally, the eyes are strictly dependent on a dietary nutrient which we all know as vitamin A. Vitamin A deficiency is still a major leading cause for blindness worldwide, <clears throat> and according to the World Health Organization, approximately 250 million preschool children are suffering from vitamin A deficiency. 250,000 to 500,000 die each year because of vitamin A deficiency. And the reason for this is found that in the fact that vitamin A is not only required for vision, it's also required for tissue homeostasis, immunity, metabolic control, reproduction and embryonic development and most of these children which are clinical vitamin A deficient and get blind uh, die with infection disease such as measles. <clears throat> The biochemical basis for this is found that our body has to acquire from the diet precursors for L-transretinoic acid and 11 cis retinol and the main precursor in the diet, in our diet and also for these children, is pro-vitamin A, which has, be to, which has to be converted to the real vitamin A and then this vitamin A has to be transported in the body and metabolized to L-transretinoic acid, which actually binds to retinoic acid receptors, which are transcribed factors that regulate gene regulation or, as we just heard from Akiko, can bind to rhodopsin and build functional visual pigments. <clears throat> in the past few years, my lab was interested in this metabolism and with a special emphasis on pro-vitamin A metabolism and we identified genes in this pathway using different model organisms. In Drosophila, we showed that for carotenoid uptake, Flies require a protein which is expressed, as you can see here, in the midgut of Drosophila. If this protein is not present, Drosophila cannot acquire carotenoids and thus go blind. Then these carotenoids have to be transported in the body. They are transported as intact carotenoids, are stored in the fat body, and then are converted, are t first taken up by another scavenger receptor called Santa Maria into the eyes, where they are converted into the visual chromophore. And interestingly, in this reaction, carotenoids are directly converted into 11 cis, 3 hydroxyretinol in a combined cleavage and isomerase reaction. And here in the Nina B mutant, you can nicely see when this process fails, these flies accumulate carotenoids in their eyes and they have these yellow eyes. This analysis helped very much to identify homologous proteins in humans and actually, and also for first in mice and then also in humans, and actually it turned out that a lot of these components are quite well conserved between even flies and mammals, but certainly they have been <coughs> adapted to the special requirements of vertebrate vitamin A metabolism. Vertebrates, however, also face another challenge, and this is that they do not only require vitamin A for vision like the flies do, they also require it for retinoic acid synthesis. And actually it's like this, retinoic acid has to be produced in more or less each and every tissue and exists there in nanomolar concentrations. 11 cis retinol, the chromophore for our visual pigments, is only produced in the eyes, but exists here in millimolar concentrations in the photoreceptors. And if you see, if you compare this, this is a, a million fold difference. How is this achieved? <coughs> If we look to our vitamin A metabolism, certainly we have to acquire vitamin A from the diet, and we showed that, like in Drosophila, there is an uptaker protein, which is called SRB1, which, which <coughs> acquires beta-carotene from the diet. Then beta-carotene is immediately converted in the gut by an enzyme which is called BCMA1, which we identified to retinol. Retinol is then converted to retinolister for transport. Actually, if you knock out in a mouse, 
Mouse model, the carotenoid cleavage enzyme, you can nicely see here that these mice then accumulate a lot of beta carotene and do not convert it to vitamin A. You see this beta carotene accumulation by its orange colors, and certainly these mice become vitamin A deficient. We also had a quite other interesting observation in these mice is that this accumulation, as shown here, can be completely repressed by vitamin A. And so there must be some regulation here, and we figured this out. This regulation worked like this, that besides from, uh, from the, besides retinal Easter production from this primary cleavage product, retinal is also converted to retinoic acid, which binds retinoic acid receptors, and mammalian genomes then have a special, a single transcription factor called ISX, which is extra, is specialized for this process, and suppresses the <coughs> Uh, expression of the uptake and also the cleavage enzyme. And this means that vitamin A production is under negative feedback control of retinoic acid. If we go further on this metabolism, <coughs> retinyl esters have sent to be transported in the body to the liver, and we have huge liver stores of vitamin A in the form of retinyl esters. And this, for example, explains that a squirrel in a cold or high winter does not go blind when not so much vitamin A is available from the diet. From the liver, vitamin A must be distributed to other tissues, and this happens bound to a protein which is called retinol binding protein 4, and this is secreted into the circulation, then associates with another protein, and is transported to target cells. And recently, a receptor called Stra6 has been identified, which is essential for the uptake of vitamin A from this protein, and actually upon uptake, of vitamin A, <coughs> RBP4 dissociate from TTR and is then excreted via the kidney. This shows you that, the, that vitamin A metabolism is quite um, energy consuming. In the target tissue, vitamin A can then be converted either to retinoic acid or to retinyl esters. And in the eyes, these retinyl esters serve as a precursor for visual chromophore production. It turned out that mutations in Stra6 has really severe consequences in humans. Actually, it causes the fatal Matthew Wood syndrome. This is characterized by anaphthalmia, kidney, uh, um, pulmonary, and cardiac malformations. And this wasn't somehow a surprise because it was known that mutations or lack of RBP4 of the transport protein does not cause such a phenotype. It only causes moderate vitamin A deficiency in the eyes and some columboma. What is the difference between a mutation in Stra6 and RBB4? And to analyze this, we used the Seberfish model. We cloned the Stra6 gene and knocked it out by morpholino oligonucleotides. And we firstly demonstrated in an animal model that Stra6 is essential for acquiring vitamin A to the eyes. However, these Seberfish larvae also showed a lot of different other malformations. This showed my microphthalmia and cardiac malformations. This is shown here in more detail, and what we found out is that under this condition, the eyes are suffering from vitamin A deficiency because they are no longer expressing Stra6. However, the rest of the body is suffering from vitamin A excess. They are producing too much, the rest of the body is producing too much retinoic acid, and this leads to retinoic acid excess, and this causes well-known malformations. We also could show, and this was finally the proof of concept, that when we are knocking down both RBP4 and Stra6 together, that we can rescue uh, the embryo, and the embryo then develops normally. This means that Stra6 is likely mainly required to prevent that, vit that vitamin A is channeled into retinoic acid formation. And we found another evidence for this, and this was biochemically evidence in a cell culture model, we could show that um, vitamin A uptake by Stra6 into cells is largely driven by LRAD. And LRAD is an enzyme which is esterifying vitamin A to retinyl esters, and this is required for storage, but also for visual chromophore production. And here you can nicely see in the presence of LRAD that there is vitamin A production very much increased. What does this mean? This would mean that since LRAD and Stra6 are both retinoic acid regulated genes, that also the transport of vitamin A to target tissues is under negative feedback control of retinoic acid. Because when 
and there's too much retinoic acid in the body, retinoic acid receptors would be activated, induce ARAD expression and stra 6 expression. This would mean that vitamin A is taken up from the circulation and stored into the ester form, which is more or less inert. And to prove this, we went into an ARAD knockout mouse model and compared it to wild-type mice, and we treated these knockout mice with a high dose of retinoic acid to impair retinoic acid homeostasis, and then looked after different time points to RBP4 blood levels. And actually, what we found is in wild-type mice that treatment with retinoic acid really reduced highly RBP4 blood levels. This means all vitamin A is put into storage, whereas in allied mice, this is not happening. This means ARAD is essentially required for vitamin A uptake and it works downstream of of Strasix. To further provide evidence for this assumption, we looked for ARAD and Strasix expression in tissues, and it's known that the lung plays an important role in vitamin A storage. And you see here that ARAD is dramatically induced, also Strasix is, uh, ARA, uh, <coughs> is uh, also Strasix is induced in this tissue, and actually then those tissues take up vitamin A. On, <coughs> here, <coughs> so also in the liver, there is induction of ARAD. Importantly, the liver does not express strasic, so there is no reuptake into the liver. We also look to other tissues. And importantly, what we found, even though the eyes express ARAD and strasic, there is no upregulation of these proteins in the eyes under this condition. And this prevents likely, we do not know the mechanism yet for it, but it would prevent that there is too much vitamin A uptake in the, in the eyes, which could disturb the visual cycle. There are other tissues. <coughs> in conclusion, we <coughs> identified components for vitamin A production, vitamin A transport, and tissue uptake, and metabolism. And importantly, because vertebrates or <coughs> and humans, including humans, have to synthesize two different components, bioactive components from dietary vitamin A, are transretinoic acid and the visual chromophore. We showed that too much retinoic acid synthesis is, is, pre <coughs> is prevented by a negative feedback regulation, either of vitamin A production, but also of body distribution of vitamin A. At the end, I would like to thank the people in my lab who performed all the studies, and I would mention that we had nice collaborations with Chris Falczewski, Martin Gold, um, Goldchuk, and also with the fly with Greg Montell from John Hopkins. Thank you for your attention.